Today's lecture is Beauty and Creation, Earth and Sky. I want to give you some information that startled me when I was preoccupied with researching it. Let's start with the introduction. Most of the introduction was written by David Bassett. So let's take a look at this. The interrelationship of Earth, its physical construction, living <coughs> systems, the moon, and all the heavens, this interrelationship is a beautiful symphony. Associate David Bassett writes, of all the lessons which the earth continually teaches us, perhaps the most obvious and profound is that it alone, among the worlds framed by the word of God, Hebrews 11.3, is divinely crafted, sculpted, and engineered to sustain life. In fact, the more we learn about our solar system and the universe, the more unique our earth becomes. At home, David continues to write, to over one million different species of life, each with its own special criteria for survival, the earth repeatedly reinforces the fact that God orchestrated each detail necessary for terrestrial existence. We're going to find out some of that in a moment. For thus saith the Lord who created the heavens, God himself who formed the earth and made it. He hath established it. He hath created it not in vain. He formed it to be inhabited. I am the Lord and there is none else. Isaiah 45, 18. Let's begin close to home. Now with those statements that David wrote and he did a splendid job. Let's begin close to home, close to our own bodies, with a feature of the marvelous design in the human body, the human spine. It works in concert <coughs> with sounds and vibrations <coughs> of the universal orchestra. That spine holding you erect isn't just attuned to your body. It is a part of the orchestra of the entire universe. First point, the human spine, an optimal design. The inward curve of the lumbar spine, the lordosis, was thought by evolutionists to be a problem, the result of man standing upright. And this is that inward curve. Actually, the arch of the spine has a beautiful purpose. It's like the arch of a bridge. It adds strength. Because of this arch in the lumbar spine, a man with a lumbar lordosis can lift proportionally more weight than a gorilla with its cryptic outward curving spine. Hmm. Numerous studies have hinted to the, at the possibility that the spine is essentially a musical instrument. If so, the spine would incorporate some system of inaudible sound resonance. Well, let's see if it does. Quoting from the technical literature, bone is an excellent conductor of vibration and is therefore capable of resonance. Each vertebrae in the spine has a characteristic shape. Indeed, each vertebrae does have a resonant frequency. Applying the correct vibrational frequency to a vertebrae can induce sympathetic vibration that restores the vertebrae's normal fundamental frequency. Now that's very interesting. It's a part of the universal orchestra. In addition, Appropriate interaction of vibrational frequencies has been shown to increase bone density, thus extending the quality of life. 